I'm sorry for anybody that doesn't have a Catherine in their life. She's really changed me. She reminds me to get up and go and, and find something new or learn something new, um, try something new. I love her passion uh, for life and her love of people, her love of country and, and her Lord. If there's a will, there's, there's a way for her. She's such a leader and she loves to stand up for what she believes in. She definitely has a sense of adventure and an outgoing spirit. There's nowhere Katherine Brown Olhausen would rather be than enjoying nature, the outdoors, and all life has to offer with her husband and two children. The devoted wife and mother, avid shooter, hunter, and passionate philanthropist has dedicated her life to positively influencing lives wherever she goes. I love having people around. Um, it feeds my soul and that's what it's all about. The love of the outdoors and the love of nature, spending that kind of time together is important. We grew up here in Atlanta. Um, my parents are originally from South Carolina, so we have really strong low country roots and that's something that they never lost touch of. And so growing up even in Atlanta, being in the city, we were always involved in the outdoors. We did not grow up playing tennis and golf. It was always hunting and fishing, those kind of things. I'm the youngest of four. I have two sisters and a brother. I'll never forget, I was um, there at the home waiting for mom and dad to come home from the hospital, knowing full well I had a brother coming home. And I remember pulling in the driveway, mom rolled the window down and I said, what's his name, what's his name? And mom said, Catherine. I just busted out crying, but as uh, God would have it, um, she was the one sister that, that took a liking to the outdoors, to hunting and, and learning how to shoot. I think from that day, I was shaped into being a tomboy because I became my big brother's pseudo brother. When um, Eric and I met, one of my prerequisites was, I hope he can hunt because that's what I grew up knowing. It was probably a more awkward first date because it was a group blind date. Coworkers of mine and coworkers of his were friends and they kept saying, you need to get together, y'all would be great. They conspired and figured it'd be a good match and we are uh, later this year celebrating our 25th anniversary. So I, I think they did a pretty good job putting us together. We had an interesting first two years of marriage. Uh, we were married on a typical Saturday night, but then um, the following Monday, I was starting business school in Manchester, England. And so uh, the first two years we were married, we were out of the country. We were in about 25 countries throughout Europe and Asia and Australia. There's no place that she has any reservation about going to. Um, we've backpacked through India, we've gone through Laos, horseback riding in Uruguay, it's just, you name it, Bosnia and Serbia and Croatia. We've all had a, an appreciation for the outdoors, so um, the more you can get outside, the better. I think that foundation of uh, seeing the world, of travel, um, wanting to share our, that with our kids, um, sure enough, later on, um, that's really what we did with them. <laughs> We've always been very outdoor oriented. I've been on my dad's lap in the, uh, in the stand since, <laughs> since I could walk, and so is Wallace, um, whether that's, you know, in the dove field or um, in the deer stand. A lot of our really good just family memories of watching a, a, a dog bust up a covey of quail or, you know, watch, watching the ducks come in. We first went to South Africa um, for our 10th anniversary in an area called the Karoo, kind of the Plains game area along the Orange River. We, you know, followed these groups of Impala around for a long time. And finally, we got some right in the range where we could get into position. And my guide, my professional hunter, was like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. When I tell you to pull the trigger, you pull. And that's what we did. And boom, I shot it. I, I still, I can feel the adrenaline. It was such a big deal. You know, it was the first time I'd shot a big game animal. So there are all, all kind of emotions that go through you on that. You're excited, you're proud, but you're also, you know, you're a little sad. It's a lot to take in. Five years later, um, we returned with our kids and my parents. We went um, sailing, we went bungee jumping, we went cycling. I mean, it was just, it was- Photo safari. It was one of the best yeah. trips ever. 
Ever since their time abroad as a young couple, Catherine and her husband Eric dreamed of showing the world to their two children, Wallace and Marshall. As luck would have it, all the pieces would fall into place in 2007 when the entire Olhausen family embarked on a year-long adventure across the globe. Second trip to um, South Africa we had planned as a, as a summer family vacation. And one night we were over at Catherine's friend's Julie's house and we just looked at each other and said, what, what if we don't put our kids back in school after Africa and do what we always have talked about, which is show our kids the world. We kind of floated the idea that night around the dinner table just to see what they would say, you know? And they were all for it. We um, just, you know, kind of picked up everything and just kind of left. and. It was, uh, it was a pretty cool bonding experience as far as families go, because... We were each other's only friends on yeah. the trip. Marshall and Wallace clearly are better siblings. Uh, they realized that each was the other's only friend for the year, and so uh, I think that's paid off well for everyone as a family, just to have had that experience. I mean, it was an adventure. It takes a lot of courage to just drop everything and just kind of leave. Yes. But it's it's the type of thing that I really do hope that I'm able to do with uh, you know my family at some point down the road. For Catherine and her brother Bennett, the legacy of their parents is not only the impact they left on their hearts, but the impact that their charitable work will leave on future generations. Their devotion to their community and children continues through their namesake philanthropic foundation and has led to numerous fundraising efforts throughout the Atlanta area. Dad came from a, um, a childhood where um, he really didn't have much. He didn't, um, he didn't come from, how do I put this? They were poor. Um, and so dad and mother both felt that the best thing they could do as far as leaving a legacy and an impact was to help children in need. They have always been very um, passionate stewards in their community. They were always giving of their time, of their resources, always um, doing whatever they could to better the community that, that they lived in. And so they set a, a very good example for us and they expected us to do the same. And we've been doing that ever since. Um, Mom and Dad set up a, a foundation before they passed. Um, it's the Mary Allison Bennett Brown Foundation. It's their lasting legacy, and they said to their four children, this is what we want you to do. We want you to carry this on. Seeing our family foundation that has been in effect way before I was even born, that's always been a big part of our family and taught us how to combine philanthropy with things that interest us. They definitely showed us that, you know, giving back can also be a lot of fun. Over the years, I've been involved in different um, shooting tournaments, and we host one um, here in Atlanta every spring called the Atlanta Charity Clays. I chaired it back in 2004, I believe, and then again about five or six years after that with my husband as a chairperson. This year, I'm happy to say my brother is chairing it, so we're keeping it all in the family. It is one of the most amazing events. It raises money for Atlanta area children's charities. Bringing great people together that love the outdoors, that love to shoot, um, love our rights to carry firearms, and, and it's a great way for our foundation to be involved, helping kids um, while we have fun. I shoot with a group of ladies that came out of the charity clays because we had a group of women who were shooting as a part of that. And so we said, well, why don't we add on a day to the to the charity clays and have it be the women's shooting day? And it worked really well, but as we grew, it became too much. We became our own entity. For several years, we um, raised funds for the Trust for Public Land. And most recently, we've um, changed our focus. Um, one of our ladies brought to the table the military initiative at the Shepherd Spinal Center. And it is a wonderful organization that helps um, military vets who have had some brain injury and or lost a limb for rehabilitation so that they can live a successful life and be back in the mainstream and have the support that they need.
Catherine's appreciation for philanthropy, the shooting sports, and the Second Amendment all prepared her for her next big role as co-chair of the 2017 NRA Women's Leadership Forum Luncheon and Auction in Atlanta, Georgia. I've always been an NRA supporter. I've known about the NRA. Now, my kids aren't around anymore. Eric and I still are, you know, have our shooting pursuits and do all that on the weekends. And when the hunting season's here, we're busy with that as well. But um, yeah, it's something nice to find a group of like-minded people that enjoy the same thing I do and be able to engage in a whole nother way. Shooting sports certainly are part of our lifestyle. Um, I certainly uh, like that there's a, a group that's looking out to assure that we continue to have access to, to what we enjoy. It speaks to me and I want to help be a part of that voice and change perception. I'm very proud of, um, of her and, and her willingness to serve and, and, and take on this role of um, women in the RA to help um, preserve our gun rights. I think it speaks to her love of country and her love of her rights and wanting to uh, have those to be able to be continued on to her children. You know, most people might envision the NRA and think it's all a men's organization. Now today, I will say, you know, women are the fastest growing segment of gun owners, of the shooting sports, and our voice can shape the future and shape policy and our concerns need to be considered. So far, I've been amazed by these women that I have come across from meeting um, with Susan LaPierre and some of her other folks that there is a lot to be done and a lot of excitement and a lot of momentum. I'm very excited that my mom took on this role of the Women's Leadership Forum because, I mean, she is just such a leader, such a go-getter. This is right up her alley. It's inspiring to me that she's able to take on this role. I hope she also inspires other people. My goal is to get the Atlanta group of women to come out and to take away that, wow, this is something bigger than myself. I want to bring more new people in as well. I will definitely go to the Women's Leadership Forum because of her, yes. The history that she's had with her family and the camaraderie she's had with her husband and her children, that kind of gave me a base to believe in this. She just reminds me of an all-American moment in time right now. I really want for my children to understand where I got it all from, the sense of family, the sense of purpose came from their grandparents. And so I just hope that they do have a good understanding of who their papa and their mamie were because they're the ones who laid all this groundwork. They laid the foundation, you know, we, we have followed in their footsteps. The legacy of her children will see that she's a, a, a real person. She gives back so much of her time and effort and um, bending over backwards to help uh, people in however any way she can. Catherine's legacy will be that she reminded all of us to enjoy every single minute of life, to live it and live it well.